The system is not a good system. When you take Louisiana, I went to Louisiana, I campaigned, I campaigned there, I won the state. Now the numbers come out and I have less delegates than Cruz. That's not the American way. Because of arcane rules and a lot of nonsense, frankly, I, get, I end up getting a few less delegates than Cruz. That's not the way the system's supposed to work. Imagine being Donald Trump, thinking all you had to do to win the Republican nomination was get people to vote for you, only to discover the process is a lot more complicated than that. Each state setting up its own rules to choose delegates, the actual living, breathing human beings who elect officially the party's nominee at the national convention. Trump was so upset over the results in Louisiana that he just been there where rules may let Ted Cruz pick up a few extra delegates over him despite losing the popular vote, that Trump threatened to sue the Republican National Committee. At an April 1st meeting with the RNC to try and patch things up, Chairman Reince Priebus reportedly tried to explain to the frontrunner how exactly things work. According to a New York Times account of the meeting, Mr. Trump turned to his aides and suggested they had not been doing what they needed to do, specifically asked the RNC, do I have a good delegate team? What else should I do? Even after attending GOP nominations 101, there are signs Trump is still struggling with the delegate process. In Colorado, voters don't play a role at all. Party officials pick the state's delegates at a series of congressional district conventions and a big state convention this weekend. According to Politico, Trump's point person in the state was recently fired amid campaign infighting. And a former Colorado GOP chair told MSNBC, quote, there just doesn't seem to be any Trump organization at all. And Ted Cruz has already managed to sweep two congressional districts that held earlier conventions, picking up six additional delegates. Trump is even being outmaneuvered in Arizona, where he already won all 58 delegates in the winner-take-all primary on March 22nd. Those delegates are bound to vote for him on the first ballot at the convention in Cleveland. But if Trump falls short of the 1,237 votes needed to win, those delegates are free to vote for whoever they want, which is why the Cruz campaign has been recruiting candidates for the 55 open delegate slots, essentially as sort of undercover agents who would turn on Trump after the first ballot. Trump had recently hired a veteran operative named Paul Manafort to head up his delegate efforts, but according to multiple reports yesterday, Manafort was raising grave concerns, possibly even threatening to quit, over a power struggle with Trump's controversial campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. Today, the Trump campaign announced Manafort, quote, will oversee, manage, and be responsible for all activities that pertain to Mr. Trump's delegate process in the Cleveland Convention. Joining me now, Trump campaign senior advisor, Barry Bennett. Uh, Mr. Bennett, let me get your reaction first to someone, uh, something Roger Stone said. Now, he's not officially part of the campaign at all. In fact, he left it early on. He is an ally of, uh, of Donald Trump. Uh, this was his, his strategy for persuading unbound delegates. Take a listen. We're going to have protests, demonstrations. We will disclose the hotels and the room numbers of those delegates who are directly involved in the steal. If you're from Pennsylvania, we'll tell you who the culprits are. We urge you to visit their hotel and find them. What do you think of that idea, Mr. Bennett? Uh, probably not a very good idea, but uh, I, ad I admire the passion. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you send a message to supporters, we don't want you going to the hotel rooms of unbound delegates to, <laughs> quote, persuade them uh, uh, about who they should vote for? We, you know, we, uh, we talk to our delegates regularly uh, as they get appointed across the country, so I, I, don't, I don't think there's much chance of that happening. So uh, here's the, the, the bigger question. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump has used the word steal officially. Uh, people around the campaign have used steal. Mm -hmm. Isn't it the case that if you don't get to 1237, which I know you feel you're confident you're going to, but if you don't, yeah. it's not stealing, it's just the way this thing works, right? Yeah, I mean, 1237 earned delegates, that's the uh, deal, everybody knew, knows that's the deal. Now, you know, for the party, you've got to think about if one guy gets to 1230, he has 5 million more votes than everybody else, 500 more delegates than everybody else. Um, you know, if you, give the if you give the nomination to somebody who didn't run at all, uh, people are going to be sore about that. Um, so, I mean, that's just a factor of life. You say um, no, didn't, uh, someone who didn't run at all, that, that wouldn't be, say, Cruz, who does seem to be um, hustling pretty well to get his people placed in Cleveland. Oh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I am, this, the party is never going to Cruz <laughs> on a down ballot race. As soon as those delegates are free, the establishment will do everything they can, which is why they're backing Ted Cruz, 
to nominate their own person. So you, so, oh, this is interesting. I, I, I actually had a conversation off the record with some Cruz people about this, where I said, mm -hmm. it seems to me, the Republican Party, the institutional Republican Party, basically hates you and are basically using you as a vessel to stop Donald Trump from getting 1237. Yeah. And once they do that, why the heck are they going to? Why the heck are they going to give it to you? You think no. the same thing? Yeah, I mean, I, Ted Cruz will take fewer votes on the second ballot than he did on the first. All they care about is that he gets enough that Donald Trump doesn't get into twelve thirty-seven. I mean, he's their Trojan horse. I mean, why else are Mitt Romney and Lindsey Graham and you know all these people coming to uh, to his aid, raising him money, helping him? They don't care about Ted Cruz. Once they get to Cleveland, it'll be Ted who? Then who do you think, who's in the back of their mind? Who are they trying to place there? Uh, you know, it's, it's a Rubio or Ryan or Romney or somebody like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, so then what, how are you going to stop that from happening? I mean, I know the answer is get 1237, but if you can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you don't have to get, you know, the, the funny thing is once you get to 1237, suddenly you're 1600, right? Because everybody was with you all along secretly. Um, but if you if you could get to even if you fell short and you got to like eleven fifty, you could probably make enough deals to get there. Um, what but would you those, know, I mean, our, our primary deals, is entirely deals, different. What would those deals look like? What's you a know, deal? Uh, come to my come to my state and raise money for our party. Uh, you know those kind of things that the typically state parties you know always need funding. A weekend at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, yeah. Can we? You know, will you speak at our Lincoln Day? You know, we'll sell three thousand tickets. You know that kind of stuff. All right, but, <laughs> but what were I mean, you? Finish your thought. It's, what were you it's, say? Hor it's horribly unsexy. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just think that um, there's just no way that the establishment is going to has suddenly just woken up and decided Ted Cruz, who we've hated for the last six years, he's not so bad. Yeah, not happening. Yeah, I, I, I tend to be with you on that, Mr. Bennett. Thank you very much.